we do believe, it's inescapably taught in Scripture, in the presence of real evil. So we're working our way through these five final directives that are in the last section of 1 Peter 5. The first one was, there's a king and he is not you. The second one is, rest in your Savior's care. Here's the third one in verse 8. Take life seriously. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I, I, I love these two uh, phrases, be sober-minded. That's be serious in the way you think about life. Uh, don't just live for the comfort of the moment, the pleasure of the moment, whatever you feel like at the moment. Be serious. And then he says, be watchful. A serious-minded person is watching ahead, planning ahead, looking ahead, be watchful. But here's why he, he says that sober-minded, watchful living is important because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. We do believe, it's inescapably taught in Scripture, in the presence of real evil. We do believe in a real enemy. We do believe in the forces of darkness. And because of that, there's danger afloat. Do you take life seriously? Do you expose yourself needlessly to temptation, to danger? Are you watchful? There is real evil. Fourth directive, resist the devil no matter what. Verse 9, resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Now, I don't know if you just heard what I said, but it's a curious thing to say. He says, resist the devil, and oh, by the way, you're not the only one that's suffering. Everybody else is suffering too. Why would he say that? Peter's being a good pastor, and he knows when you suffer, the enemy whispers in your ear, where's your God now? Why have you been singled out? Maybe he has favorites. Peter is trying to silence the lie of an enemy saying, look, between the already and the not yet, we're all suffering because God has chosen us to live in this broken world. So don't let suffering break down your resistance. Resist the devil no matter what you're going through. You know, it's the face of suffering, it's easy to give up and say, why am I reading my Bible? Why am I praying? Doesn't seem like God is even there. And Peter says, don't ever let go of your resistance, no matter what you're facing. Fifth directive, trust God's sanctifying grace. I love this. He says, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. God will complete his work. God will complete his work. God will complete his work. He will restore he will confirm, he will strengthen, and he will establish. Listen, our problem is never God's faithfulness. Our problem is our faithfulness. God will do what he's promised to do. Here's the five directives. There is a king, he is not you. Live that way. Rest in your Savior's care. Take life seriously. Resist the devil no matter what. And Trust, build a life based on the surety of his sanctifying grace. Do I want to be a king? Do I doubt God every time hardship happens? 
Do I have a silly way of approaching life that lacks seriousness? Do I let go of my resistance when things are hard? Do I really trust God's sanctifying grace? Five beautiful directives that define what it lives, looks like to live in light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.